Hello, hello, good morning. Happy Monday. Uh, welcome to Coffee and Coaching. I have water this morning, not coffee, because I've already had two coffees trying to pep myself up. <laughs> Because I woke up so tired and exhausted from the weekend, which should be the opposite normally, but um, but not today. Uh, so let me know in the comments, how was your weekend? Do we even know what day of the week it actually is? Um, so the reason, so today I want to talk about biting off more than you can chew and then chewing like crazy uh, because it has served me very, very well. Um, and it's something that every time I do it, I'm reminded of, of why it works so well and why a lot of people should be adopting it into their strategies. Um, so you can probably notice if you're watching this on screen and not listening to the podcast later, I have paint all over my hands that I cannot <laughs> get off. And that is because I spent uh, the weekend totally painting our house. And I mean totally painting our house. I bought a spray gun and I sprayed the entire um, side of the house. Only one side. I've still got three other sides to go. And then, you know, I get carried away. Like one of my, my husband does say quite a lot, the phrase, well, that escalated quickly because it does tend to escalate when I get excited about things. And so um, I was talking about doing a couple of things to the house because when we bought our house, we moved in in December, so four months ago now, um, and it's a fixer-upper. So it's an old red brick house um, that needs a little bit of work to it. Good morning, gorgeous Carla. How are you? Um, so it needs a little bit of work and we weren't going to do anything because we were going to do a full proper renovation. Um, and then we decided a couple of days ago that we were going to knock the house down and build a new house in two years. And so I was like, well, I don't want to look at this red brick for the next two years. Um, so I will buy some paint and I will start painting the house. How hard can that be? I mean, we've seen people do it all the time. Hi, Kate. Um, and so, but I did get a little carried away. Um, I thought, well, I'm going to paint the outside of the house. And then I thought, I actually don't like the kitchen either. The kitchen is a lovely shade of apricot um, <laughs> with the old like timber handles. Good morning, Lisa. Um and so it needed a little bit of work, but I'm going, well, I don't want to spend money on it because we're going to knock it down in a couple of years. Hi, Francis. Um, and so what I did was I, I researched, went onto the Bunnings website and looked at all the DIY things. And now let me tell you, I'm not a DIYer. Um, I love renovating homes. I like setting everything up. I really, really like to... Um, imagine what's going to happen and then pay someone else to do it because I'm not good with painting. I'm not good with, like I start the project, I get all excited and then I don't want to finish it. <laughs> but I had the vision and I definitely bit off more than I could chew because I was like, let's paint the entire outside of the house. Let's take off all the kitchen cabinets and paint the laminate and let's paint over all of those tiles too because while we're there, it just looks terrible. And now that everything's like this gorgeous, shade of freshly paint the windows are old apricot and that apricot's just popping right out there and so now I've got to like individually tape up all of the windows and paint all the aluminium window frames oh my gosh um but the advantage of biting off more than you can chew is what I want to talk about today because it's something that you have to do every now and then um, because the only way that you get a result, like a better result than what you've had before, is to push through the pain and to find that kind of even keel between the push-pull. And where I was last week, so last week I had a really flat week, which I know um, with everything that's going on at the moment with, with COVID-19, people's emotions are all over the place. And I was I caught up with me last week. I was very flat. I was sitting there just going, when is this going to end? What is going to happen? How are we going to do anything? When am I going to be able to travel? I spoke to a friend who said overseas travel was like a year away and then I was heartbroken and then I looked at the news and saw how many people are sick and I'm just, oh, it just spiraled out of control. Um, but for me, 
it's working out what motivates. So when I get in a bit of a funk like that, you've got to ask yourself questions and go, okay, why am I feeling like this? How can I get out of it? It's all well and good to just go positivity is a choice we make. And in a way it is, but it's not that simple. It's not like every time we get into a funk, we can just say, no, I'm not going to feel like that. And I'm going to turn that around. Um, I've been able to hack my mindset a lot um, and I pay a lot of attention to the way that I'm feeling so that I can get the best performance out of myself as often as possible. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm up all the time. It doesn't mean that it's easy to turn around, but it does mean that I'm able to identify when I start spiraling into this totally unhelpful negative state of mind and question why that's happening and then work out how I can turn that around. And so for me, last week I was in that in that funk where I was going like it's just nothing there and so I sat down did some journaling did some meditating you know all the good old things and worked out what was happening and what was happening was I had nothing to look forward to so usually my normal life is so filled with excitement and different things going on. You know, there's, I live a very simple life in terms of I work from home. So isolation is actually not that different to normal life, but dotted in between every couple of weeks, I like take a trip to the big smoke and go into the city and do a presentation or I jump on a plane and I go somewhere at least a couple of times every month but not knowing when that was going to happen and feeling like I've missed out on a lot of things as well, which everybody's in the same boat. You know, so many things work related that we were going to do, events that we were going to do, my cousin's wedding that we were supposed to go to, all of these different things that were happening. I'm like, and we're just sitting at home doing nothing and when's it going to end? I don't know. And so I needed something to look forward to. And so I was telling my husband this and he turned around and said, well, how about instead of renovating the house, why don't we, because the price difference is not that great after you do all of the different things, why don't we knock it down and we can build a new house in a couple of years? And then the clincher was while we're doing that, instead of going and renting somewhere down the road while the house is being built, do you want to go and live in Hawaii or Costa Rica for six months and then we'll come back to the newly built house? Now, if that doesn't get you out of a funk, (laughs) nothing will. And so then I felt totally inspired and I'm going, oh, my gosh, I love this man Um, and was like, okay, it's all action stations. It's all a go. And so then I was like, okay, well, if we're going to knock the house down in two years, um, then I'm going to have some fun with it. I'm going to get rid of this apricot kitchen. I'm going to get rid of this red brick and I'm going to go nuts. And so over the weekend, started spraying, started painting tile, all things that I didn't even know you could do. But even the muscles in my arms are, are sore from painting. I don't know how people do renovating themselves all the time, um, but I've still got a whole nother coat to go on the kitchen. So I don't know how it's going to work. Um, but Biting off more than you can chew is uh, my point here because when I started um, getting the house ready for the spray painting, so I'd read about people spraying the outsides of their ugly red brick houses and was like, okay, that sounds like a good solution for me because it's cheap. So I went to Bunnings, I bought everything that I needed, equipment, paint, the lot for the kitchen and for the outside of the house for 1200 bucks. So pretty good considering the transformation. But my patience is not fabulous for little things. And so while the spraying, I'm like, yeah, that gets an action result really quickly. The preparation that I needed to like mask up all of the windows and put the paper up and the masking tape and then the paper would fall down and oh my gosh, I was chucking such a tantrum. And mid time, I was nearly, I was this close. Hi Donna, how you going? Um, I was this close to like going, you know what? Stuff it. I'm not doing it. This was a terrible idea. (laughs) And then, of course, I started thinking about business, which is my favorite thing. Um, And thinking about how much when we make these big plans for business, unless you stretch, unless you go further than what you can actually imagine for yourself being able to achieve, you never get that sensation of, oh my gosh, I'm totally out of my depth here, which means you never get the result that you couldn't imagine. And so for a lot of people that I work with, I see them having the same business year after year after year after year with like a 10% increase if they're lucky kind of thing. Um, And to me, I just go, you know what, we can do so much 
better than that. But the way that you do so much better than that is by biting off more than you can chew. It's by going, what am I actually truly capable of? And in my heart of hearts, what dream do I dream? And it's imagining that and then going for it. And once you set that end goal, the steps along the way, oh my gosh, they're they're painful. (laughs) They're so painful because when you're doing something that you have never done before, you don't know how to do it. And so you're going to be doing things the hard way. You're going to be stumbling. You're going to be falling. You're going to be failing. But the important thing is you keep going because when you keep going, eventually little bit by little bit by little bit by little bit, you get there and then you turn around one day and you go, oh my gosh, I totally bit off more than I can chew. But because I went for it, this is the result that I now have. And it is the greatest feeling in the world. Well, to me, it is the greatest feeling in the world. Does there, is anyone else like relating to me on that? Love that. Um, so let me know if you've bitten off more than you can chew with something and got good results with that. And everyone will get a good result with that um, if you don't quit, really, is is the main the main. Um, caveat to this is just don't quit and you will eventually be able to get there Um, because biting off more than you can chew and chewing like crazy is really one of the the biggest secrets to success so a lot of the time when you see um Carla said yep loving it Carla's dreaming a big dream, aren't you, Carla? Um, Sammy's got, I relate to your tantrum. Yep. And, you know, my tantrum, this will, this will give you a giggle because often I'm, I'm a pretty good parent, I like to think. Um, I'm pretty level-headed. I'm really reasonable with my kids, all of that sort of thing. And they would got to go grocery shopping the day before and they bought a whole heap of snacks and stuff for, um, for the school holidays, for the week at home. And I let them get some Tim Tams and some mint slices and all these yummy, yummy things, um, which I can't eat because this is my year of health and so no sugar very hard (laughs) having them in the house and so I was already resenting them a little bit for being able to do that and so I'm there like trying to tape up these windows trying to hold the paper and get the masking tape on and every time I didn't cut the paper to the right length because you know work is my zone of genius handyman stuff a for effort not a good result but so I'm I'm there and I'm like taping up and then every time like, I'd sleep and I'd go, duh, duh, I'd be like huffing and puffing, thinking they're playing like 10 metres away. They're going to hear me and come over and go, hey, mum, can I give you a hand at all? Because I'm like, you know what? That's the type of boys I've raised, someone that will see me in distress and come and volunteer to help. But they did not come. They never came. And so when I did one and I totally dropped and I turned around, I'm like, you know what? You don't deserve good things. This is really hard. It'd be so much easier if you just help me. Why aren't you helping me? And then I went inside the house and I grabbed an Enviro bag and I put like all the good treats in the bag and I put them in the back of my wardrobe. So that was a tantrum. Anyway, the upside though is they did help me for the rest of the day. So that was good. But I still didn't give the snacks back. (laughs) We all chuck mama tantrums, right? Sometimes. Make me feel better with that. Um, Stacy, love that. Um, Donna always bites off more than she can chew. Good morning, Karen and Helen. Um, Sammy's got ready to throw Premier Pro in the bin over the weekend, but I kept on chewing. That's it. And you've got to learn new things. The only way you kind of up level in your business is to do the things that you've never done before, that you have no idea how to do. Um, Carla's with me. Thanks, Carla. <laughs> Uh, Sandy loves biting off more than she can chew and chewing like mad. Love it. Um, I've done that. Hidden snacks. Yeah, good, good. I'm glad. (laughs) Um, All right, so business-related questions. Hit me up in the comments. Anything, um, it can be related to you being stuck at biting off more than you can chew. I know at the moment um, it's a difficult stage where it's hard to to get that burst of inspiration um, because we don't know what's going to happen. I was I had a coaching client just earlier this morning. We were making plans for different things that we're going to do, but there's still such a massive element in going, we don't know what the landscape and what the market is going to look like in a couple of months. And anyone pretends that they do, they're really just taking a stab in the dark. Uh, we do know that the way of working and our whole market and everything will be changed forever. Maybe everybody will go back to normal 
pretty quickly, but I think it's going to be a new type of normal. And so it's hard to know what to go for. And so in these times, it's the time to really sit down and go, you know, what do I want for me? What do I want for myself? What life do I want to build? What's going to be most important? And then going for that dream. Um, because if you're just living the ordinary life and the same life year after year, there's a lot of people that do that. Um, I know you're my best friend. She has their forever house now and wants to stay there forever and never move. Early 30s and that's it, forever. And that idea to me of doing the same thing forever, I can't do it. I can't do it at all. Um, I love adventure. I love change very rarely. And so the point is, not that you do it like I do it, but the point is being able to hack your own mindset and work out how do you perform at your best? What do you need? Is it the stability? Is it the steadiness? Is it having the security of a home that you're going to have forever? Is it having the business that you know is going to last for generations? Or is it something that you go, you know what, this is giving me a great joy right now and I'm just going to go with it and see where it ebbs and flows and where we go. Find what works for you and what keeps you inspired because that's what's going to work long term and that's what's going to keep you going for those big goals um lisa has said <laughs> take me with you to hawaii okay <laughs> um sammy read up on ask culture versus guest culture game changing for understanding some of the psychology around asking for help nice good tip um okay so i've got no business questions come through does that mean everyone's just got everything totally in the bag? Um, so let me know if you've got any questions relating to business that you need help with. Let me know. My nose is still going like crazy because I sprayed the house with spray paint and it goes everywhere. Um, I The boys were laughing at me because I looked like an old lady because we painted it a light gray. <laughs> Um, I didn't want to go the stark white, so we did a, a nice calming light grey, but I had grey all in my hair, so I looked like I had this, I actually quite like that this lovely grey hair. My um, absolute role model in life is Quinton Bryce, and I would love to, when I'm old, have this beautifully coiffed, I don't know, it's, it's very disjointed because obviously I don't um, have coiffed hair now, so I don't know if that's ever going to happen for me, but yeah, I don't mind the gray hair. Don't mind it at all. Uh, all righty. Well, for the first time ever, no questions have come through for coffee and coaching in any sort of a business sense. So I will leave it at that and wish you the best week and leave you with think of something that oh, Sammy's just got in by the bell. <laughs> Okay, let me have a look. Can you do a bit of an unpack around open cart, closed cart, launch model for online courses and memberships? Yeah. Um, oh my gosh, I could talk about this for the next hour. Um, but I'll put it up in a nutshell. Uh, so I like open cart and closed cart because having that allows you. So my um, my philosophy around launching is I will launch something for a week every 12 weeks. And then I have 11 weeks where I'm not selling anything. I'm just massive value adding, building that community, forming that connection, having that there. And then when I launch something, I've got all of those people there that already have that no lack and trust factor. And then if they're ready to jump in, they're there. Um, so I find that better than having like a slow sale all the time. I do hit a launch week hard. So I know a lot of you are on my mailing list. And so when it is launch week, it's a daily email for seven days because I don't want people to miss that. But people will usually forgive me for the intensity. I get a very low unsubscribe rate because in those off times, the, the time in between is long enough and I'm not constantly selling people stuff. Um, and so I think that works really, really well uh, is, is focusing on building community, adding massive value. And then when you open cart, have a really thought out uh, launch system. So we've got um, a whole launch system there. It's actually on my board just above my head. We're building a program now called Launch Lab, um, which is going to be another online course that people can use that are launching that will kind of show every bit step by step that we do for a launch to really kick ass in that week. Um, but yeah, so that is what I would do for launching is open and close because everyone that I know that opens and closes has a better result than people that have it open all the time because you can't be marketing to people constantly all the time. They'll just switch off from that because nobody likes to be sold to 
all the time. Um, so hopefully that helps Sammy. Sammy's launching Fuel Collective, um, which is beautiful, beautiful branding. <laughs> um, Carla, you're awesome. Thank you. Uh, all right, everyone. We'll have the most beautiful week. I'll be here same time next Monday. See you later.